Greetings. Uh, thanks for joining me again today. Uh, this is number five in the Potag series. Um, and this is just a, a beautiful little tune. And it should be easy to play, but we're playing the trumpet. So <laughs> it, can be, it can be challenging to do any of these things. And that's why we're working on these, these simple little tunes, simple short little tunes that are, that are uh, challenging to our basic skills. So I'm going to play a little bit and then kind of practice through it as, as I've been doing previously and give you some ideas which I uh, sincerely hope will be helpful to you in your own practice. That's a nice tune. Wow. Um, it has some things in it that I think uh, are indicators. <clears throat> when you hear a person that plays um, um, with a wonderful vocal fluid kind of style on a brass instrument, especially the upper brass, uh, the horn, horn and trumpet, um, it's a really special sound. And that's something you, you, you want to work hard to, to cultivate. And you're hearing it here right from the very beginning. You have an interval, a slurred interval. So you have first a sixth, and then you have the octave slur later on. And that gives a lot of people problems. And I had a couple of problems uh, going through in one spot because I didn't trust what I was doing, and I kind of clamped down a little bit. Now, <clears throat> I'll show you what I mean. Let me see how easy it is with a voice. Uh, <clears throat> I'm not a trained singer, so you know, pardon the quality, but experiment with it. See what you can do. It's, an, it's something that um, is close to what we're trying to do on the trumpet. Now, what's the same, the connection there is that the air's flow is continuous and easy and smooth, and the sound, the vibration of the vocal cords or of the lips is continuous and smooth. So in this style, that's what you're looking for. Okay, um, big dynamic changes, big range changes. So these are the things to, to be watchful for. Now, I have to make a decision here, and I get, I get questions about this. Right at the beginning, <coughs> it says piano. And okay, that means soft. What does that mean? Well, I get to choose. Where am I going with it? Well, I have piano, and I have mezzo forte, and I have forte in the, in the whole piece. So I want that, that range of contrast, right? But I don't want to be starting almost so that you can't hear it. It's a solo. So you have to bring it out. But there are levels that you're trying to establish. Now the question is, how much should I crescendo? So I get questions from students like, uh, how much should I, well, see, that's your choice. So how do you make the choice? If you were singing it, what would you do with your voice? Uh, you know, does, is, does your crescendo go to mezzo forte or forte or mezzo piano? I don't know. <laughs> how do I decide? I try and find the expression, so. You see the gesture? And it's the same every time. Now, of course, I can change it, but I have an idea. I, I kind of like that, so I'm going to stick with it, make my life less complicated, right? So 
when it comes again. And here's another thing. It's music, it's alive. It doesn't have to be the same every time. It needs to be fresh. It needs to be new every time we hear it. And so give yourself that, that freedom. Don't paint yourself into a corner, you know, lock yourself up in a box, trying to do everything correctly or perfectly. Uh, what you want to look for is <clears throat> what feels right, what sounds good, what, what has the right expression. And uh, listen for that, and when you hear it, go with that. that that's, your, that's the best advice I can give you on something like this. Okay, at the end, let's just take a look at the end, and, and then, then I'll let you go. Um, it starts forte, and then it says, there's a decrescendo, and then it's piano, and then it says morendo. So morendo technically means dying away, dying from mort, morendo, uh, but not only dying away in... Um, in dynamic, so the sound is gradually diminishing, but it's also, also in terms of um, time. So it's a little bit different than just a regular diminuendo. Let it go. And so that's challenging here. see if you can bring it all the way down to nothing. Now again, I got the microphone two feet from my bell, so... Can you hear the, the note? It's, it's great to practice that. Now, if it gets, gets you tight, <laughs> relax, <clears throat> breathe a little bit, open up, play at a comfortable dynamic level, enjoy the quality of your sound, especially if you can get in a, in a larger room <clears throat> where you can hear the, the real quality uh, of, of your voice on the trumpet, and then see if you can keep that quality as you get softer. It's one of the best exercises that you can do. Keep it alive, keep it ringing, keep it projecting, and get it all the way down to nothing, and then come back up again. It takes a good deal of control, but you will be rewarded if you practice that. Okay, that's enough for today. Um, now, as I've said many times before, go practice. Enjoy it. I'll see you later on. Bye-bye. <laughs>